Hello again, I'm here to share another pen from my collection, and this one's a rather interesting one. It's uh, from what was a Canadian company from the last century, uh, and it's called the Eclipse. And it's a pen from around the late 1920s or early 1930s. Uh, it's a hard plastic pen. Before this period, they were making pens that are hard rubber, and this is from the period when they were making a uh, what they call Bakelite, or Bacolite, I believe. Bakelite, I, I would go with. And um, there's not really an, any other information on the pen other than the uh, the name, which you see on the clip. It's uh, gold-filled. All the trim is gold-filled, so it's a, uh, a fairly high-quality pen. Um, you can see a little logo just at the top of the clip, and... Towards the bottom of the clip, um, there's patent pending. Um, you can see to some extent uh, the right here on the, the band uh, telling you that it's gold filled. It has a 14 karat gold nib. It's a screw cap. It posts fairly well, uh, actually quite well. And it's a lever filler. And it has what um, nowadays would be considered a very flexible nib. It's um, so it, it's a, a lovely pen to write with. It gives you lots of line variation. So it's the Eclipse. And we'll do a yeah, so it gives you quite a bit of line variation in the in the writing. And what I have in, in it is um, Noodler's Apache Sunset. So I'm just going to do a quick little writing sample for you. And as you see with this ink, it uh, actually shades very nicely, gives you lots of uh, attractive uh, variation. Um, it probably has an ebonite feed, as you can see. Um, it's a fairly un, fairly plain nib, uh, in, in still in good shape. Still writes very well. And when I first got the pen, it mostly just needed a cleanup, and of course the ink sack had to be had to be replaced. Uh, I haven't I have seen other versions of this online. Sometimes you'll see them in red. Uh, there's different types of trim and things like that, and uh, I'm not too sure exactly when they stopped making them. But um, it's a you know it's a a nice 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 specimen of a nice example of this 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 pen um, I'll show you just a couple other pens in comparison to it and the reason I've chosen these is they have similarities in design oddly uh, this is a Lamy all-star and this is a Twisby echo both pens are f similar in size if, if, if but uh, just a little bigger and a little thicker um, the echo is um, uh, a couple of millimeters longer, and so is the All Star, and they're just a bit thicker. The interesting thing about this pen is it's actually quite large for a, a vintage pen. Quite often, you see vintage pens that are fairly small, but uh, you know this has a nice size to it. It uh, it's, it's a not overly heavy pen, but it does have a nice weight to it. Feels good in hand. Uh, it you can write with it unposted if you wish, and uh, if I post it, it's actually fairly long. Uh, it's a bit back weighted. It has an interesting pattern on it. As you can see, there's lines engraved in the body and there's little squares that show up. And it's in excellent condition. And I'm always, uh, you know, I keep it uh, for writing cards and letters and things like that. And it's, it's just a joy to use. It's, it's smooth. It's uh, has a bit of feedback, and uh, you know, if you ever come across one and you can, and it's at a reasonable price, I, you know, you might want to pick it up. It's, 
fine example of early uh, types of fountain pens. Thank you. Anyway, hope you all have a good day, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and all that other stuff. Thanks a lot.